Hello students, welcome back. We will discuss some more concepts in this part of evolution. In previous parts, uh, we will discuss about uh, a natural selection proposed by Charles Darwin. So let's see that uh, types of natural selection. Selection is the process by which those organisms which appear physically, physiologically, and behaviorally better adapted to the environment survive and reproduce and pass on their successful characters to the next generation. Those organisms not so well adapted either fail to reproduce or die. Selection depends on the existence of phenotypic variation within the population and is part of the mechanism by which a species adapts to its environment. A population has three types of individuals based on their size. They are average sized individuals, large sized individuals, and small sized individuals. So if you express these uh, three types of individuals in a graph, so here it is that uh, a representation, graphical representation of these uh, three types of individuals in an a population. So now it is a, a original population in the nature that is uh, already it is uh, specified that uh, the plain region it is a mid sized uh, this region is mid sized individuals and uh, this region is a large sized individuals and this one is the small sized individuals it is a, a original a population appear in the nature so now here the phenotypes is nothing but a physical appearance that means uh, small in size medium in size large in size that is we can see by our eyes that means uh, external appearance of that character right? that's why it is called as a phenotypic and its frequency is nothing but their number There are three types of selection process occurring in natural population and they are described as stabilizing, directional, disruptive selection process occurring in natural population. Let's discuss about stabilizing selection. And it is also considered as a balancing selection. This type of selection favors average sized individuals while eliminates small sized individuals and large sized individuals. It reduces variation and hence does not promote evolutionary change. However, it maintains the mean value from generation to generation. If we draw a graphical curve of population, it is well shaped. So let us uh, see that uh, graphical representation of the stabilizing selection. So now already it is uh, clearly mentioned, it uh, favors the middle mid-sized individuals. So that's why in this population, the mid sized individuals are growing, and uh, gradually, the small sized and large sized individuals are eliminated. This indicates that it does not uh, promote evolutionary change. 
so if uh, if anyone promoting that evolution it need to appear appear in new species but here what happened there is uh, no variation is occurring in this uh, stabilizing selection so that's why it does not promote the evolutionary change the second type of uh, selection process that is a directional selection or progressive selection in this selection the population changes towards uh, one direction it means this type of selection favors either small sized individuals or large sized individuals and more individuals of that type will be present in the next generation the mean size of population changes so if you are observed this graphical representation is clear towards the population selection occurs towards only one direction already in normal we mentioned that middle sized small sized and large sized individuals are present in a population among these three different types of people that means individuals in a population the population the selection is occurs towards only one direction that means uh, either towards the increasing the population of large sized individuals in this graph we are given uh, representation of increasing the large number that means large sized individuals or may increase the smaller size also either the small size individuals or maybe large size individuals only increased that type of individuals will be present in the next generation and the mean size of population is changed because of uh, large size individual another individual number is increasing so for this uh, the best examples for this uh, directional selection that is evolution of ddt resistant mosquitoes industrial melanism in a peppered moth and uh, evolution of giraffe as per darwin explanation natural selection so we know that uh, in a population in ddt in the case of uh, ddt pesticide anthropogenic action so in earlier when uh, they are using first uh, using of this ddt the many of mosquitoes are died but a few are resistant to that that means the population having both Uh, sensitive mosquitoes towards this ddt and resistant but resistant uh, mosquito against this ddt are less in number because uh, until use of this uh, ddt there is no use of that uh, resistant mosquito when they are start to use this ddt the resistant mosquitoes are survived and sensitive mosquitoes are died that means here the selection is directional towards uh, one direction that is selection of this resistant one and sensitive mosquitoes are declining so it is the same here we are representing that uh, three individuals we are taken here uh, small sized middle sized and large sized instead of that the same graph if you are draw with that uh, sensitive mosquitoes towards ddt and uh, resistant mosquitoes towards ddt if you are take that two individuals then the graph that means suppose here this uh, uh, peak we can represent the ddt resistant varieties and this uh, this region we can represent the 
sensitive mosquitoes that means sensitive mosquitoes are decline after using the this ddt and uh, large size uh, that means uh, resistant to dna that means sorry ddt mosquitoes resistant to this uh, ddt will increase so that indicates that uh, the selection is uh, towards uh, one direction directional selection that we are also consider as progressive selection disruptive selection or diversifying selection this type of selection favors both small sized individuals and large sized individuals it eliminates most of members with mean expression so produces two peaks in the distribution of the character or triad that may lead to development of two different populations this type of selection is opposite of a stabilizing selection and is rare in nature but is very important in bringing about evolutionary change the example for this uh, disruptive selection stebbins and his co-workers studied an example of disruptive selection in a population of sunflowers over a period of 12 years in the beginning the genetically variable population of these sunflowers was a hybrid between two species after five years this population had split into two subpopulations separated by a grassy area one of these subpopulations occupied a relative dry site and other occupied comparatively wet site during the next seven years the size of the population fluctuated greatly in response to differences in rainfall but the differences between the two subpopulations were maintained so let's see i don't know how far you are understood this one in the beginning of this experiment these uh, sunflower plants are genetically variable population and it was the hybrid between two species what they are selected that sunflowers are the hybrid so hybrid uh, is developed by crossing between two different species of the sunflower after five years they get uh, some uh, crop of the sunflowers after five years this population that is hybrid sunflowers population split into two groups that means two sub population groups and they are uh, planted or cultivated in two different areas one is relatively dry site and other one is uh, comparatively wet site so first they select a hybrid sunflowers and they are cultivated after five years the cultivated sunflowers are grouped into two sub population groups and one sub population group is cultivated on dry area 
and another sub population group is cultivated on the wet site area during the next seven years so first five years it is that the process is over then after separating them into two population groups again they are observed the seven years so during the next seven years of their observation the size of population is uh, fluctuated greatly why because uh, one group is growing in dry area and another one is in wet place that means that great fluctuation that means changes in population size of population in response to differences in rainfall because dry area always get low rainfall and wet areas are having more rainfall but the differences between the two sub populations were maintained let's know about uh, another concept that is uh, artificial selection man has bred selected plants and animals for agriculture horticulture sport or security so man has that ability to introduce this scientific technologies and uh, he developed that breeds of the selected plants and animals so plants for the agriculture and some of the animals for the agriculture and plants for horticulture and some animals for sports and some animals for security man has domesticated many wild animals and crops that means wild animals or wild crops are nothing but native plants and native animals this uh, intensive breeding program has created breeds that differ from other breeds but still are of the same group once uh, imagine that we are all very well known that uh, different breeds of dog Hatch dog is different. Doberman is different. Alsatian is different. Pomolev is different. These are the different breeds of the dog, but still they are all comes under the same group. It is uh, argued that if within hundreds of years man could create new breeds, could not nature. nature have done the same over millions of years is this nature have done the same over millions of years this artificial selection could be practiced by two types of breeding methods inbreeding and outbreeding this concept we will discuss in the ninth chapter animal husbandry inbreeding involves a meeting of two closely related individuals and is carried out to perpetuate nothing but continue carried out to continue a particular characteristic outbreeding involves the mating of two unrelated individuals and results in the progeny called hybrid which is together than the parents so hybrid having the characters of both the parents so here it is uh, some of the uh, examples uh, which favors this artificial selection artificial selection may give rise to new breeds or varieties which differ from the original population wild or native population 
example various breeds of domestic pigeons like porter jacobin and fantail have all descended from the common ancestor the wild rock pigeon so whatever the uh, new varieties or breeds of this pigeon that is porter jacobin and fantail these three breeds are uh, descended that means develop from the wild rock pigeon so that uh, diagrams or photographs of that pigeons are given here so it is the wild rock pigeon from this uh, wild rock pigeon the remaining that is porter have uh, this is the crop region so enlarged crop is present and in jacobin that is a uh, as the neck feathers are reversed neck feathers are reversed and uh, fan tail that means uh, the tail feathers spread like a fan so all these three types are uh, developed from this common ancestor that is a uh, wild rock pigeon so another uh, from the plant side artificial selection is also practiced producing better varieties of crop plants previous uh, about uh, birds nothing but animals and now about uh, plants so artificial selection is also practiced to produce the better varieties of crop plants so previously tomatoes are seasonal now it is available throughout the year so like that so now for example for this uh, statement uh, cabbage kohrabi and cauliflower or descendants of common ancestor called as uh, colvert is the a uh, plant from that uh, colvert plant uh, all these three cabbage and uh, kohrabi and uh, cauliflower are developed now the next concept that is uh, mechanism of evolution variations are essential for evolution mendel gregor john mendel conducted series of experiments that talk about inheritable factors influencing phenotypes here factors nowadays we are consider as genes at the time of this gregor john mendel there is no term discovered of that gene gene term is not discovered at that period so that's why he used the word factors to represent that gene so Gregor John Mendel conducted series of experiments and talked about inheritable factors influencing phenotypes inheritable factors nothing but uh, the factors which are transferred to the next generation or influencing the phenotypes that means our external features Hugo de Vries a brought for the idea of mutations large differences appearing suddenly in a population here it is another scientist that is hugo de vries he brought an idea that is uh, mutations that is sudden change in that factors that is genes sequence that uh, brings the large differences uh, in a population suddenly Hugo de Vries believed that mutations caused evolution and not the minor variations as explained by Darwin minor variation or minor change in gene composition not caused the evolution mutations uh, 
are responsible for causing of this evolution that is a, a belief of this hugo debris hugo debris uh, theory hugo debris rediscovered mendel's loss of inheritance so mendel based on his experiments he proposed some loss for the inheritance transferring the characters that is law of dominance and law of independent assortment law of segregation so the hugo debris started to rediscover these laws hugo debris in 1901 proposed the mutation theory based on his observation on the wild variety of evening primrose its scientific name is vinothera lamarckiana that is the scientific name of uh, evening primrose so he proposed the theory that is mutation theory and uh, he used the experimental material that is wild variety of uh, vinothera lamarckiana when this evening primrose was self pollinated and its seeds could grow majority of f1 plants first generation plants were like the parents but few of them are different uh, plants from the parents he observed some different plants in that uh, first generation plant that uh, different plants were self pollinated and most of the plants were like the parents again while well, few were still more different plants and this continued generation after generation these plants appear to be new species hugo debris suggested from his experiments that new type of inherited characteristic may appear suddenly without any previous indication of their presence in the race let's see the representation of that hugo debris uh, experiment on vinothera lamarckiana so he took that normal plant vinothera lamarckiana he self pollinated that so he collected the seed and uh, he sow it and uh, he will get the f1 generation plants this is f1 and in that f1 plants uh, majority of the plants are normal to this uh, parent plant but a few plants are different and then for the next experiment he selected this different plants and self pollinated and again he get a result in that majority of that plants or resemble to their parents but few plants again different from these uh, parent plants so like that it is continued in the next generation and next generation and it is continued so then he concluded that that new character appearance is uh, suddenly it is appearing it is not present in their parents so that's why he proposed that new character is appeared in a population is due to the mutation suddenly salient features of the mutation theory based on abo observation on the vinothera lamarckiana hugo debris put forward a theory of evolution is called mutation theory the theory states that 
evolution is a jerky process where new varieties and species are formed by mutations so they are also considered as discontinuous variations that functions as raw material of evolution the salient features of this mutation theory are mutations or discontinuous variations are the raw material of evolution mutations appear suddenly they become operational immediately unlike darwin's continuous variations or fluctuations mutations do not revolve around the mean or normal character of the species the same type of mutations can appear in several individuals of a species all mutations are inheritable transfer from one generation to another generations mutations appear in all conceivable direction useful mutations are selected by nature lethal mutations that is a, a death which are lead to death are eliminated however useless and less harmful ones can persist in the progeny accumulation of variations produce new species sometimes a new species is produced from a single mutation evolution is a jerky and discontinuous process it is not a continuous process as per hugo devries every theories are having drawbacks or maybe criticisms so let's see that uh, criticism of this uh, mutation theory Voinothera lamarckiana of Hugo de Vries was not a normal plant but a complex heterozygous form with the chromosome aberrations so let's see in his experiment what he said he took that normal plant of Voinothera lamarckiana that's why he got uh, in f1 generation he got uh, a few different plants suppose if you have a idea about the concept of one gene or maybe mono hybrid or di hybrid concepts so in mono hybrid concept uh, when you cross the tall and dwarf plant all the f1 individuals are tall so there the parents are homozygous that means uh, the both the genes are similar capital t capital t tall plant and small t small t dwarf plant when these two are self pollinated you will get f1 plants that is capital t small t heterozygous condition their tall is the dominant one so now here Vinothera Lamarckiana of Hugo de Vries was not a normal plant. It is not a normal plant. It is a, a complex heterozygous. That means a, a different uh, type of genes are present that form the chromosome aberrations, differences in that chromosome. And second criticism natural mutations are not common in as Hugo de Vries thought them to occur. So natural mutations are not common, very rare. But as per Hugo de Vries, natural mutations are common. But natural mutations are not common. Third criticism: mutations are generally recessive, while triads taking part in evolution are usually dominant. So whatever the mutations are occurred, that mutations are recessive. That means they are not expressive. but the characters are taking part in evolution are usually dominant and fourth criticism mutation theory cannot satisfactorily explain the development of mimicry 
mutual dependence of flowers that is mutualism and uh, pollinating insects it is not uh, explained uh, properly and fifth criticism this theory mutation theory does not explain the role of nature so these are the drawbacks of mutation theory proposed by hugo de vries biologists who supported darwin believed that gradual fluctuating inheritance variations over a long period of time caused new species to arise so those who are believe the darwin theory believe the darwin theory they believed that uh, gradual fluctuating inheritance variation over a long period of time caused new species to arise so it is a gradually takes while those who are believing this hugo de vries a new species could arise from a sudden jump a sudden change in the genetic material so that oftenly called as uh, saltation so saltation can define as a, a single step large mutation is called as saltation the differences between hugo de vries mutations and darwinian variations hugo de vries mutations explained by him or random but darwinian variations were small according to hugo de vries uh, mutations are directionless whereas according to darwin variations were directional hugo de vries believed mutations caused specialization and evolution darwin believed that evolution was gradual modern views on darwinism or modern synthesis and it is also considered as a new darwinism evolutionary theory came of age when biologists stopped thinking in terms individual organisms and began thinking in terms of population and changes in the frequency of genes so the biologist stopped to thinking till now during lamarckism neo lamarckism during darwinism the biologists are think that individual organism they are think about individual but the evolutionary theory the new evolutionary theory it came when they start to began to thinking in terms of population population is nothing but a group of organisms or group of individuals so group of individuals or group of organisms when they are start to think and a change in the frequency of genes in that population when they are started that this uh, evolutionary theory came the development of this evolutionary theory will develop when they thinking is changed from individual organism to a group of individuals gradually a new comprehensive theory called neo darwinism or modern synthesis emerged that brought together population genetics and darwinian framework of evolution it emphasized the importance of population as the units of evolution not individual organism importance of population as the units of evolution and the importance of natural selection as the mechanism of evolution 
Today, evolutionary biology is studied at two levels. They are microevolution and macroevolution. Microevolution. It is a field that studies changes in the hereditary material. That means uh, the ma hereditary material is genetic material. So, in this microevolution, they studied the changes in that genetic material. That is evolution at genetic level. It considered progressive changes in gene frequency within the population over many generations. So, microevolution deals the changes which occur in the genetic level. Macroevolution. It is the field that studies changes and uh, diversification of organisms over a period. That is evolution on a grand scale of geological time. It considers origin of new species, adaptive radiation, diversification of organisms, mass extinction and other events on a grand scale. Important features of Neo-Darwinism. Neo-Darwinism has redefined the unit of evolution, incorporated knowledge of genetics into the basic structure of Darwin's theory. The unit of evolution is not individual organism, but it is a group of individuals, nothing but population. In Neo-Darwinism, evolution is defined as the chapter in the frequency of an allele gene within a population as a result of environmental changes and natural selection. Neo-Darwinism also considers the changes that may arise due to accumulation of mutations in a population. Although Neo-Darwinism accepts natural selection, but it also considers other factors like recombination, gene migration, and genetic drift in gene pools during evolution over a period. Thank you, students. We will discuss some other concepts in the next part.